Let's make this mono railroad come alive and build some scenery. Hi, I'm Tom Kvitschak and this is Tom's Trains of Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And scenery is very, very important for that model railroad. So let's get going with it right now. We're going to start off with the streets and then go to scenicing everything else. I already cut my sheets of styrene to the width that I wanted them and this one right here I'm going I'm going to have to cut on an angle on the side that where the track is and a little bit of an angle over here where it meets up with the uh, the tavern. I'm going to cut some more for the road right between the tracks, the curved track and the straight track. I already laid down two layers of cardboard. I'm going to have another piece of uh, 40,000 styrene sitting in here for the road and another one over here that I have to cut on this side right there. But the first thing I have to do is put in these Blair line uh, crossings. Some of it goes in in between the tracks and then you have two two pieces on each side that go that cover the ties outside the track I finished up all the lights on all the buildings and I have them wired going down on the bottom and I have them placed approximately where I might I could bring them out like a, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so if I want to put a profile building be behind them. Now these other buildings I think it might be more visually impressive if I put them on an angle. I have to paint all this. I have to put a coat of uh, gray primer on it and then scuff it up and make it look like a street. I'll probably put it down first and then do the details on it of the street afterwards. Once I had all the street sections cut to the desired shape, I took them outside and primered them with gray primer, rattle can style. To get the slope that I needed on a styrene, I propped it up like this and then used the heat gun to flatten it down. You can see the contour of that section right here. The waiting game. Just mixed up some plaster of Paris and waiting for it to dry. I uh, put it along the road surfaces and along the grade crossing over here. Just did a very small batch. Also put some over here on this transition right there where it drops down to no cork road bed. And you can see that I use the foam adhesive to keep the track down right there and what I had left over I filled in right over here where the grades change as you can see I had to lift up the buildings the front of the buildings over here and I still got a little bit of plaster of Paris on that one right there which will come off easily but all I have to do is wait for this to dry now and then I could sand it down a little bit, paint it, and then add scenic material and I'll be finished with the actual grade of this area right here. I might have to touch up some of the uh, ballast in this area. So just work on a small batch that you could work on and I add uh, a couple of drops of vinegar to it to make it last longer. It took me about uh, maybe 20-25 minutes to do to apply this. Uh, I put it down uh, soupy <laughs> the consistency of sour cream and then I smoothed it out a little bit and then once it got a little bit hard I smoothed it out uh, some more. I attached the styrene to the foam with super glue and the same goes for when I did it on the ties. 
I sculpted and sanded down the plaster of Paris where needed on the road surface. Next step was to paint the plaster of Paris and touch up the styrene where I needed to adjust the colors on it. I used painter's tape to outline the building where they would be setting so I wouldn't have any scenic material on it. I brushed on full strength white glue for the base coat of the scenic material. Pieces of foam along the edge that I cut out to contour the terrain down, I place in the back to build it up a little bit higher. As you can see right here. Just finished up the section right here on the edge of the module with the first layer. I put dirt and I put some scenic material down also. I may put a little bit more. And the way I caught it, uh, this is a uh, paper that I cut in half. That I got from Hobby Lobby, you know, the, the stuff that they wrap their glass in before they put it in the bag. I taped it to the side and then put my little clamps on it to hold it up and caught, you know, the, the debris falling down. Most of them anyway, because you can see there's still some down here. I didn't catch it all. Uh, I could have done a better job of taping this, but, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's just to, to catch most of it. But uh, I was spooning it up and uh, putting it back up on here. But basically, this is how I do it. I put down a layer of glue, full strength with a brush, and then sprinkle the dirt. And every once in a while, I put some of the uh, brush and stuff on it and here's what I use right here scenic texture flock and turf right there and I drip some diluted glue on top of it afterwards and you can see right here where it's a little bit darker that's where the diluted glue is, and that will probably stay dark like that. I might have to add a little bit more of the finer uh, uh, dirt. This is uh, ex Express Scale Ballast, medium natural soil and dirt. I have another one down there that is the fine that I will put on over top of that to get rid of this darker area right here. I had the same thing right here and you could see a little bit of the darker area. I didn't I wanted I wanted to keep, you know, some different colors in there so I didn't put the fine on this part right here totally. I just left some of it to uh show through where it's a little bit darker. But this is what I've been working on here. I have a little bit more painting to do on the rocks. And a little bit more scenic material on the wall right there. And uh, right over here also I have to paint. I just put a, a medium gray to represent uh, rock texture on there. And I'll put a couple of different colors on there. I put a, uh, a white uh, dry brush on it and uh, some other colors to make it a little, a little bit better. Maybe to blend in with those uh, the stone wall. And got some small trees and uh, some of those this is a, a tree armature uh, that I added some uh, texture to it. No, that other one right there is a tree armature. But these right here are JTT uh, products that uh, I bought some time ago. 
that I had on my old layout. And they're actually branches, but I use them as small trees. I may have to just uh, touch these up a little bit with some paint. The, because you can still see the wire twisted on the, some of them here. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. When we was in Odessa, we stopped at uh, Newport Ritchie. These models right here that have the styrene base on it is from the other layout. And I had, like on this one here, I had to trim it up a little bit to fit on, on this module right here. Crown crate fit perfectly right there, but I have to put a servo right underneath here. So I may have to hide it underneath. So uh, put it underneath this building right there. Moving right along, doing a little bit at a time. Touching things up, taking a look at it and seeing where I miss things. And then <laughs> I still have to find all my people that I packed up. I got all my small parts and people and scenic details and I put them in a small container, but <laughs> I still have to find that. And so it's starting to look like a model railroad. I dry brush some light gray on top of the medium gray for the rocks. I think that looks a little bit better, but I still need to do a little bit more here and here. And I also did some over here. This was my first attempt and I got a little bit too heavy on it like right around in in this area right there but uh, it still looks pretty good adding vehicles people and small details to the scene makes it come alive and i have to do that yet to everything on here and once that's done it will look a lot better I still have a lot of work to do on here, and the model railroad is never quite finished. There's always more details that you look at and find and add to it once you go along. Let's take a look at some of the photos that I took of the area that I worked on. Fortunately, I had buildings already assembled from the previous layout, so it made things go a lot quicker. But in the future, I have many kits that I need to build, and I'll probably be doing some kit bashing and scratch building some buildings along the way. You could even hide your electronics underneath the buildings. This is the first time I've used foam on my model railroad as a base. It's a lot easier to work with when you're changing elevation on your scenery. Planting trees is a snap. You don't have to drill a hole or anything. You just poke it right into the foam. You can even create an entire scene on the foam and just drop it into place wherever you like. I have a lot more work to do on this model railroad as far as scenery goes so there will obviously be more videos on me working on the scenery and other projects on here so keep watching and don't forget to smash that like button and if you haven't done so already subscribe and don't forget to ding that bell so you can be notified because, you know, YouTube doesn't like to notify you anymore on these videos and live streams. And speaking of live streams, don't forget to check out my live stream every Monday night at 8 p.m. So until the next time, we'll see ya!